Hey, welcome back everybody. Uh, this is another episode of uh, Hacked in the Dark. Uh, this time we're playing Asphalt and Trouble, uh, a sweet actual play uh, that Jacob will uh, explain more. Yeah, so I'm Jacob. Uh, I am the uh, writer of Asphalt and Trouble and the GM of this uh, show. Uh, Asphalt and Trouble is a game about biker gangs in the climate apocalypse fighting against other gangs and corporations. Uh, we are the awesome bikers. These are the hellhounds. Uh, and uh, my pronouns are he, him, and I'll let uh, everyone else introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Ian, he, him, and I'm playing Doc, the architect. Hi, I'm Jared, he, him, and I'm playing Seth, the confidant. Uh, and I'm Travis, uh, and he thinks good for me. Uh, and I am playing Anthony Roger, or Ridges, excuse me, the greaser. Hear me. I'm Danielle. Uh, I use she or they pronouns, and today I'm playing Kiki Gathan the Breaker. Very cool. So, uh, we left off with the gang completing a uh, um, kidnapping, I suppose, or, or something like that. <laughs> uh, very, um, very, very intentional. Forceful invitation. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> First, coming into the uh, Barber's Warehouse, uh, the Barber's being a rival biker gang who specialize in cyber mods and experimental things like that, um, who we have learned are working with the corporations, uh, specifically the St. Germain Hospital Association. Uh, the Hellhounds went into the warehouse pretending to be this corporation and uh, recording a conversation with some incriminating evidence that uh, the bikers have been working with the corporations uh, with the intent to spread it around town to discredit the barbers. They succeeded and also uh, made off with the leader of the barbers, uh, whose name I forget. Uh, I K? Uh, Serrated K. K. Right. Serrated K. Thank you. Um, or Kaylee Serrano for her real name. Yes. Correct. Uh, that was just a test. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that is where we left off, riding off. Um, and uh, we have not quite decided what we're doing with uh, Straight K. Um, there's also going to be some payoff for this ride, some, uh, some rep and some reward. Uh, which makes sense to go over first. I think we should talk about uh, what exactly your plans are. So I think we pick up uh, in the truck that you had stolen and were using to pretend to be a corporation uh, with Sir K in the back and a couple of others, and I forget who was driving. Uh, oh, were you? Okay. okay. Well, when we st oh, yeah, you took over. Yeah, Seth took <laughs> over so you could do cool guy stuff. Designated right. wheelman. Essentially. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, everyone else then is in the back of the truck uh, with Sir AK. Um, she has tried to escape and has been detained like twice by now. Uh, and is just kind of glaring at you. So, does anyone say anything? or? So, uh, which part of the swamp do we want to dump her body in? Do we swing by there on the way back, or is what Seth's calling out over his shoulder as he's driving. Uh, that's hard to, to follow up altogether. Um, <laughs> I, I think Anthony would probably just be uh, looking to Josiah or Doc, um, partially for, for a plan. Like, I, I kind of expect him, he's the one who got us together and hopefully the one who... Uh, has those things, the plans. Um, I kind of just mess around with the technology mostly. Uh, South side of the swamp. <laughs> we didn't plan to pick her up. Let's just drop her off. Sounds right. good. South side of the swamp. All right, uh, as a reminder <laughs> to the audience, um, uh, there are a couple setting options in Asphalt and Trouble, and we decided on the Floodlands. Uh, so there are swamps. Uh, other settings include deserts where there would not be. Um, 
Yes, so you can drive around to the corner of the swamp. Uh, do you just kill her, or how? Do you, like, what do you... I'm kind of hoping she'll make an offer here, but, uh, you know, if if she's not... Okay. Uh... Oh, Seth is totally believing we're just going to kill her and dump her in yeah. the swamp. She broke the cardinal rule, you don't work with the corpos. Mm -hmm. Like, that's this is a foregone conclusion. Uh, yeah, so when it becomes obvious what uh, her fate is... Uh, she will plead um, not to be killed. <laughs> um, not the south side. What about the west side? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the south side is it's filled with alligators. Uh, <laughs> uh, and they're not the robotic kind. <laughs> so, yes, she will offer a large payment and uh, basically whatever else you demand, like, to let her live. And does that include uh, merging your gang into ours? What's left of it? Um, she says, uh, what the rest of my gang does will be up to them. Uh, I can tell them, I can give them instructions, but it's up to them if they want to follow them. So I can't promise that they would uh, go along with you. Fair enough. Uh, they know what happens if they come into conflict with us again. Um, I just lean over to Doc. Are we still killing her? <laughs> yeah, that's kind of. Ret <laughs> I, I'm getting mixed signals. Are we still driving, or have we parked on the south side of the swamp and are negotiating here? Uh, either. I, I think we, we have... probably got to the swamp. You know, sure. she was like, "Oh, they're just bluffing," and then we're like, "All right." Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. So, but she says, um. Uh, if you want to uh, use some of the town's resources, uh, we can back off a little bit in town. Um, Leave and establish our own turf somewhere else. Yeah, I was going to... Can I... like? Um, I want to pull Doc aside for a second. Uh, and just kind of like... We're, we're like a distance away, so she can't hear us, obviously. But uh, just like... You know, we were... We were getting incriminating evidence here, right? Trying to establish the that the corp was moving in, that they were manipulating the people in the town, right? Right. I mean, why not? Uh, why not get her to actually just admit it? What we need, so that we can uh, just inform the people, really. We can I pile mean... up all the all the blackmail information we want, but I mean, we kidnapped her once. We can kidnap her again. I think once the uh, the barbers are uh, a tributary gang, we don't really need to worry about them anymore. We don't need her to do that. We just busted into her warehouse and proved she's not worth anything. And she broke the one fucking rule. You don't work with the goddamn corporations. Don't tell me you're, you're actually seriously considering working with her. I mean, rules are made to be broken, aren't they? Not this one. This is a big gang we're talking about here. We could be pulling in a lot more coin if we had them on our side, and we'd take over the town in one easy step. And we'd literally be le leaving a serpent to bite us in the ankle when we turned our back. I ain't afraid of snakes. And more so, by working with her, you're literally working with someone working with corporations, leaving you one step removed. And then it's really only a short fall till you yourself are working with them. Is that where we're going? I mean, they've got the money. They got the parts. Whether we're stealing it from them or they're delivering it to our doorstep doesn't matter that much to me. Uh... I, there's not a whole lot of privacy, so she can hear this. Um, and... Yeah, I was going to say, this is a quiet swamp. There's crickets in the background. Yeah, can you right. join me over here for a whisper fight? We need to have a whisper fight right now. Um... <laughs> um, but yeah, she speaks up and says, uh, well, that's what we thought, too. Um, take what they'll give us and uh, profit. So we just do the same thing, but better. I 
I think Seth looks looks to uh um Oh, my, my brain is trying to remember names again. Uh, Anthony, like, for some sort of, like, backup and support into Kiki, like, I'm not the only one that's, like, full-on, like, not liking this idea. I, yeah, I, I was thinking about, and this is, this is going places I didn't see coming. Um, no, I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like halfway through this conversation, like, listening to Doc, uh, like, fighting with Seth, um, and I don't know, Kiki, do you have any, like, has Kiki given us any tells, or is Kiki just like, yes, everything is okay? <laughs> uh, I think Kiki's keeping her best poker face, uh, looking intimidating as possible, leaning up against the side of the truck. Um, yeah, because I was considering, uh, Anthony possibly, like, pulling out his gun, like, as this conversation was going on, um... <laughs> and, I mean, there's a, a short push from uh, Seth uh, if we need to uh, if we need to keep Doc in line. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> wow, this got violent quick. I love it. Um, <laughs> hostility. So you oh. you can see Anthony like pulling his gun out and like prepared to uh, correct this grievous error. I think uh, Kiki pushes off from the wall and kind of grabs uh, it's a Kay. Kaylee, sure. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, grabs Kay kind of by the scruff of her shirt and drags her out of the truck um, and kind of calls back over her shoulder. We don't want blood in the truck. I'll take care of it. Um, and takes Kay out into like beyond the light of the truck. Um, And uh, then she says, do you know how to play dead? Uh, she nods. OK. Um. <laughs> uh, and she she looks her in the eye and she says, do not make me regret this. And then she hits her so that she falls down and there's a sound of an impact. Mm -hmm. uh, and gets like gets a knife out or something, coats it in the blood from her cut hand, mm -hmm. um, and then comes back. Okay. And the rest of you are still fighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um... I think uh, it, it has not de-escalated. It's just been kind of delayed a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, so so when I when I see uh, Cry pulling out his gun, uh, and then Kaylee Kaylee comes back with the bloody knife, I'm just like, it was only a bonus opportunity anyway. We're missing out <laughs> on a little coin. It could just come out of your share. And uh, I'll I'll just let the issue drop. <laughs> Kiki shrugs and cleans off her knife. All right. So um holy shit, Seth and and, and uh um <laughs> wow, Seth and Anthony actually got along on that one. Great. <laughs> <laughs> good bonding. <laughs> they were they were clearly united in some purpose. I like it. Right. All right, so uh, when Kay does not return to the barber shop, the uh, hideout of the barbers, um, there is talk amongst them, and uh, also where it arrives that uh, the warehouse is off limits. Um, they say the hellhounds uh, assaulted it and were wildly successful. So, um, uh, a reminder for the audience, we are not going to track either Rep or um, Teat because we're doing a shorter campaign, so we're just going to have tier and threat level increase by one each time. So uh, the threat level also increases as word reaches the corporation. Uh, I think we cut back to the kind of skeleton, the headless skeleton of that uh, lion bot that you killed on your way out. 
and a uh, little light is flashing uh, it, like inside of it. And then we see uh, on some desk somewhere in the city a light flashing uh, in time. And attention has been brought back to this area uh, from the corporations. So, uh, yeah, there was some uh, taking the time later to go through the now abandoned warehouse, which you have claimed. Mm. Um, there was some stuff that was worth money there. A lot of uh, they still had some experimental corporate gear uh, that they have not like installed in people, basically. Uh, but. Um, without K to really give the direction that you're uh, like to, to pay you or anything like that, um, you only get four script. So a small, or just a small bit of what's left over, kind of. You can split that one each or however you want. Yeah, I think one each makes sense. Yeah. Uh, the. Um, the warehouse counts as a vault for your the amount of script you can keep in your uh, crew, I suppose. So you can now keep up to eight. Cool. That's the benefit of having that. Um, plus, as you get more turf, uh, the roads that connect those turfs become yours, uh, and you get bonuses for having open road as well. Cool. Um, so. How how do you go about releasing this uh, evidence that the barbers are working with corporations? So is there like a local radio station or newspaper? Like, I was thinking maybe some sort of freestyle radio or something in yeah. the, the swamp. Right. Sure, yeah. Someone runs it out of their garage kind of thing. Swampy yeah, bottom s swing or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Or soggy bottom. Sorry, not swampy yeah. bottom. <laughs> All right. Uh, so you you give them. Who, uh, let's give this person a name. Oh, that's I. I'm not good at names. Did the uh, the rogue meteorologist work at this radio station? Oh, maybe. Honestly. <laughs> oh, yes. yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, and you. So this is your cruise cohort, Huxley Snyder. Or the yes. contact that means not cohort. Uh, yeah, so Huxley uh, does the weather reports and also plays smooth jazz. Um, or maybe swing. Sometimes both, depending on the mood. Heck yeah. It's the time of day, really. <laughs> I'm digging this. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, we could just hand him the recordings and let him take care of editing. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so it takes some time for word to really spread and for people to uh, understand what happened. Uh, during which you can do some downtime and uh, relax, recover, plan your next ride. Um, there is pretty immediately some panic amongst the towns, uh, townsfolk, though. Many people bought into the barbers' plans of you know these experimental mods and stuff. Um, so uh, the people who have them and their families and everything are uh, starting to panic. Like, is this actually safe? Oh no, are we secretly corporate stooges? What information are we spreading to the corporations? And these kind of rumors spread and, uh, and fears. I will say that uh, an assault like that um, did uh, set you at war with the barbers. You have uh, minus three approval with them. Fair. Um, does that uh, reduce our downtime like it does in Blades? Yeah, so it works similar but not quite the same. So you have the same number of downtime actions, but uh, if anyone wants to inhabit your haunt, the barbers are prowling around looking for you. Someone else will have to be a lookout, which is also a downtime action. Uh... So it's slightly more forgiving or less, depending on how many haunts you need to inhabit and how much stress you have. So that's instead of the blanket negative one downtime? Right. Instead of just having one downtime, it's two downtime, but for every uh, inhabit haunt downtime, someone needs someone to, needs to watch out. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, just out of curiosity, how would that work out if my haunt is... <laughs> it's the barbers. 
to, it's not the main probably barber headquarters, but it's definitely hanging out with one of them in one of their shops. Oh yeah. Um... <laughs> or is that just completely probably barred from me right now? <laughs> yeah, it might be. Oh, I think yeah. Fair. I don't think you're allowed to go there. That's that's that's. Unless fair. you're like in disguise or something. Fake mustache. <laughs> if so, if you choose not to take uh, lookout actions, or as many lookout actions as you have inhabited haunts, then it does. The only consequence really is that it changes what the entanglement table you roll is. Okay. So if you desperately need those downtime actions, you can. I think that was a pretty low stress ride the last one, so I yeah. don't think it would be a problem, but. Cool. Uh, so we may want to work on healing uh, long-term setbacks because uh, those aren't affected by this, I think, right? Uh, correct. And you can clear any short-term ones that you have as well. Does anyone know what they want to do first? Ah, uh, yeah, I'm debating. Yeah, um, I, I know. Okay, um, okay go ahead. So... Uh, for starters, um, we have a friend, uh, Martin, right? And that's the corporate guy we got. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we set him on the, the task of trying to reprogram or purpose this uh, that original panther that we found, the mm -hmm. cyber panther. Um, so maybe the first scene uh, is like Anthony, uh, after we've gotten back to the gas station diner, um, and me kind of like hauling in that maybe it's on like a pallet because i don't think i want to carry a giant like ball of blades um <laughs> but i like wheel in the uh the cybernetic lion head uh alongside and i'm just like so is it uh is it got it's got like upgraded space or something like you can uh you can just put this on right <laughs> uh, yeah uh and he looks confused and is very focused um and uh like stares at it for a minute just like blankly and you're not sure if he heard you or what he's doing and then suddenly he reacts uh very animatedly and says ah, i've got it and begins to pull parts out and like digs in and uh cuts himself a little uh and looks at the blood and gets more excited and continues digging so we decided uh between sessions that this uh, expert tech is the type of cohort he is, has the edge tenacious and the flaw wild. So he is uh, certainly going to town. Um, and I think he gets the idea that uh, it should look bloody already. <laughs> and starts oh going. yeah, biker blood. Just, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so metal. Yep, he's giving yeah. into all the propaganda of what bikers are like uh, and living that up, even though uh, it's not true. So <laughs> I probably sit down like at his computer station or whatever to look over his notes as he's like doing stuff and you can tell that he like probably like had his hands on the wrong part of the keyboard and he was like typing but like all the wrong letters came out uh, like words are misspelled and stuff and I just start correcting stuff for him um, <laughs> sure all right, so are you using your special ability your new ability yeah 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 so I've got the special ability to apply two ticks to a long-term project, uh, and presumably that's the first bit of this Panther initiative. Right. Okay. So you've got... Uh, you, it completes the progress wheel for the Panther uh, programming, so um, it's still a little, like, uh, rough around the edges and, like, slightly patched together, um, but you can now control this Panther, more or less, as... Uh, the corporations did so basically you have like a tablet or something like that mm -hmm. uh, that you have programmed in like so attack anyone who's not wearing a you know emblem or something like that okay yeah i was gonna say is it is it complex enough that we uh we can have an identifier on us that they will not attack or is it just we've deprogrammed the don't attack corporates uh no you can have it so like you've all got a like cerberus head uh emblem on your jackets mm -hmm. so it will uh like if it sees that it will identify that person as someone not to attack awesome definitely will not backfire on us later yeah I <laughs> um i'll say i right. suddenly got an idea for one of my actions and, and yeah it might not 
backfire, maybe. Um, um, so the, uh, there is still the, you know, options of upgrading this that I think we've talked about as well. More heads. It's not independent enough to count as a cohort, but okay. it, uh, yeah, it's something that you can direct in, in a scene. Does anyone want to trade down times to uh, inhabit haunts? I'm just trying to think if it I is. I use some stress relief. I think, uh, I said, unless someone else would like to, I think, uh, Seth will be willing to kind of trade. If you kind of watch out for him, he's going to do a semi, well, narratively, he's going to inhabit his haunts, um, in the, the fiction, I think he's going to try and like either acquire an asset or something. basically he wants to go see, uh, his, uh, person essentially. Okay. His his yeah, brand, right. um, So yeah, he's willing to basically to, to to trade. Like yeah, I'll watch out your back if you watch out my back while I literally walk into enemy territory. <laughs> um, and so I think uh, narratively, my character might not even go with you. Uh, but the way that they're spending this downtime is that they get like a bunch of the guys together from the gang and have them all just mosey out in force so that there's like a dozen of them in the area wherever you go just coordinate everybody's schedules mm -hmm. just so in case. if anybody thinks about starting something they see a bunch of hellhounds just sort of arrive from the background mm -hmm. nice all right so yeah you've got this backup if you want to go see alexa your uh stylist so your stylist <laughs> His stylist slash confidant slash they, they have a long, yeah. really complicated history. Uh, <laughs> but yes, Lexa, his his hairstylist, um, and I think the main th I, I don't know. I guess this is a corner, an asset, but he he wants to basically kind of pop in and, and go. The barbers are going down. You really need to probably talk to whoever's reasonable left and get them the fuck out have them abandon, jump ship, join another gang, or just wait things out, or join us, but just find a, a new group. Yeah. Uh, she thinks about this for a minute and says, um, without Kay, uh, we have to find some new leadership or something. Um, but from what I gathered, talking to the rest of them, the rest of the gang... Uh, it was really Kay's idea to work with corporations. Um, so I think we've got a new uh, a new foothold. Maybe we can make something work. Um, I, I have heard some of the uh, gang talk about leaving Soggy Bottom Creek, but uh, some people are also pretty entrenched. The thing is, I'm pretty sure the people I'm with are not going to be willing to, to stop with just straight at Kay. I mean... The barbers have been officially marked corpos. It's it's over at that point. We both know that. Change badges. <laughs> Rebrand. <laughs> Rebrand. <laughs> I mean something. Right. Um yeah, she thinks about this and says uh, and asks um if your gang is going to uh, attack ours, can you give us give me some warning and uh those who are willing to listen, maybe we can get to leave. I'll do you one better. And I think he's he probably hid this, but he's gotten a hold of an extra Cerberus patch. Mm. Ooh. And, <laughs> and he passes and basically this will afford you protection from us. If you were it though, I'm assuming you're officially leaving the barbers. Yeah, she takes it and uh, holds on to it and thinks for a minute. Uh, and thanks you. And, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll... Deuces! And, uh, leave. Alright. Um... You wanna roll for that? See if you... Overindulge? Oh, 
Would that count as an indulgence, or would that count as more require asset, or... I'm not sure what that would officially be for downtime action. Yeah, so I don't really know that you acquired anything. Yeah, that's true. Um, I was wondering, because I, I was thinking actually that perhaps uh, you, you know, your gang had slighted her. Yeah. Since uh, she was there, we had said as part true. of the double bargain. True, true, true. Um, so that could be just... Uh, Fixing a slight. Fixing, yeah. Fixing a slight. Yeah. That would make sense. Yeah. Then that's actually probably more important to him. So fixing the slight. Yep. Easy. Okay. Um. Sure. And so for for my inhabit the haunt, uh, I'm gonna go to the hospital, um, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna you know as we agreed have Seth come along and bodyguard me. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing it, I'm going to intentionally, you know, try to make it subtle so he doesn't know I'm doing it, but make a point of showing like how badly they need all the uh, all this corporate supplied medical technology that we've stolen and then uh, given to the hospital for script and stuff. Mm -hmm. So just just trying to, to subtly make a point about how ultimately we can't just ignore the corporation. If it's possible. I, I almost want Seth to make the counterpoint of so so wait why are why is this person sick again what what rejected <laughs> but where did those come from oh, oh. Uh -huh. I was just curious I don't know much about this medical stuff <laughs> sure so I think <laughs> so we're we're sort of debating uh, yeah but mm -hmm. but not not passive aggressively <laughs> <laughs> passive aggressive possible rounds I love it yep uh, and that only cleared uh, one stress which okay, makes right, sense. Zero dice. Yep. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Um, so while you are there, you are um, approached by Savannah, who is a mercy giver. She is also a, a medic, but um, more of a like administrator. And uh, in the hospital, and outside of the hospital, she's more of a like spokesperson for the, the mercy givers, or like a, the person who goes between gangs. Um. And she, uh, like, I think it's not while you're having this debate, but she, like, approaches you having heard what you did uh, at, like, to the barbers. And you know as well that the Mercy Givers and Barbers have a longstanding rivalry as well. Uh, so she, you know, greets you and thanks you for what you did uh, and says, um, if you have plans to kick the uh, barbers out that would, out of uh, Soggy Bottom Creek, that would help uh, the Mercy Givers quite a lot. We could establish, we could really make this uh, this hospital grow. We could establish a trust amongst the people. Um, they've been poisoned by the barbers' uh, lies and medicines for too long. So uh, yeah, basically, if you want to kick out the barbers, the mercy givers are behind you and possibly willing to help. Um, yeah. Well, I'm a big fan of everything you guys do, and I think the, the stronger the cooperation between the mercy givers and the hellhounds, the better. So uh, you have a, a way that I can get in touch next time we're playing an operation, and maybe we can do a little... Uh, one two punch yeah she says you know where to find me I'm here a lot of the time alright I'll let you know All right uh Kiki do you have any ideas for a downtime so how does one heal uh, long term setbacks so your setback is a cut hand so mm -hmm. uh, you might spend time at the hospital as well um, getting stitches uh or you could develop a, um, or buy a robotic hand. <laughs> Whoa. Or something like that, too. <laughs> that <was> sudden. <laughs> uh, no, I think she'll she'll probably go to the hospital and get stitches. Is it just like you spend your downtime action? No, it's a, it's going to be a, a four-spoke uh, long-term. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, then, yeah, that that is what I'll do. Um, so, um since it's not like uh 
necessarily you stitching yourself. It might be a uh, tier roll to see you know, like what kind of access to the hospital you have. Mm -hmm. I do have a friend in the Mercy Givers. Ah, okay. Um, yes, so you can add a die for having help from a friend. Excellent. Um, what tier are we? One uh, now? One. No. Yep, just one to one. Excellent. So, oh, two yeah. dice. Love to see it. Great. One <laughs> tick. <laughs> okay. Uh. Um... They're your friend, but they still need to be bribed. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's especially busy now with everyone trying to yeah, get their mods and exactly. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, one take on stitches. Do you want to keep working on it or do something else with your, with your downtime? No, I'll go ahead and spend my other downtime action to, to work on it again. Yeah. Um, there we go. There go. All right, that's, that's three. So, yes, <laughs> hey, here, there we uh, go. Yep. Yeah, behind a stitched up. Uh, and feeling better. So you can play that out. As it turns out, whatever this this panther thing has in its bite is pretty bad. <laughs> no, that was that was uh, serrated K's arm. Oh right, yeah. Oh, that was. Yeah. Oh, that's true. true. I was yeah. grappling yeah. with sword arm. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yes. Uh, she uh, may have poisoned her the blade on, in her arm and. Uh, took you a little bit to realize that's why it was not healing. Um, I had a Dr. House moment of like, oh, wait, it's this. <laughs> right. And like yeah. rushing back with their cane. And... <laughs> yeah. While this is happening, you get a similar speech from uh, Lament, your friend, uh, mm -hmm. you know, thanking you and saying the mercy givers are behind you if you want to take them out. Take us wherever. Right. Well, thank you very much. It's heartwarming, really, to see all these mm -hmm. gangs working together. Yes. <laughs> um, and I'm sure they can be completely trusted and aren't just using us and potentially just trying to get those corporate contracts for themselves. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that cynicism out loud? I apologize. <laughs> uh, so, Anthony, you haven't actually spent a downtime action. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so I think... Uh, after we get this panther like operational, so like we do the the programming and everything between me and uh, Martin, and um, I think he probably starts like showing it off or whatever, and probably breaks a few windows in the diner. Uh, like, look, it can jump like fifteen feet. Look at this thing, and just like throws it through the wall. And I'm just like, dude, come on now. Um, <laughs> Yep. And eventually we you. yeah, we get him to like uh calm down, deactivate the the panther and stuff and I uh maybe I like kind of uh wean Martin off of the the project a little bit like all right, yeah, that's tell everybody else um the the controls or write a, a document or something. Like I need you to but do it in the diner like sitting down just <laughs> over there. Um <laughs> And I start uh, trying to, like, see if I can't, like, plan out how we could actually attach uh, at least this one head we have and potentially uh, another one if we can find some sort of uh, mm -hmm. a sweet Maybe head to go actual, with it. Like, uh, canine head. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. robot instead of... We're going to have to uh, change our design scheme. We're not a... Robot alligator head. We'll, we'll deal with it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a chimera. It's fine. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I want to, so I want to do that. Um, I guess I don't exactly know. Um, I need to do one project to kind of design it then, and then probably another project to make it or. Yeah. So it's slightly, you, you have, uh, it's slightly different from a bike mod because this is mm -hmm. not a bike. Um, but I can it ride it. Be. It could be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this could become your bike if you wanted to. Um, That'd be pretty sick. Yeah. Do you want that to be like your uh, goal? goal? <laughs> yeah, build a saddle. I'll do that on the side when nobody's looking. <laughs> could okay. we all get like transforming bikes that turn into like actual hellhounds type thing? Hell yeah. Is this where yeah. we're and going? Then they combine into a big one. <laughs> 
sounds <laughs> complex. Uh, it's maybe like a a year down the road. We'll put it on the business yeah, yeah, model. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tier five. Tier five. Yeah, the next campaign <laughs> we play is just gonna be beam saber with the same characters. Yes. <laughs> we are the corporation now. <laughs> uh but yes, you were saying, Jacob, this is uh, not a bike. Yes. Okay, this is not so, a bike. Right. Um So it doesn't I don't know if it necessarily follows the same, like, you have to develop a blueprint and then install it kind of rules. I think you can okay. just do a long-term project to attach a head. Yeah, okay, absolutely, yeah. I'll, I'll start that project then. Okay. So, um... So what do you do to work on this? Well, since finding out that we have a garage, uh, mm -hmm. Anthony has done an inventory of the tools uh, and spare parts we have lying around, and it's um, decently stocked. Uh, like, we have all the basic necessities to um, kind of, like, you know, put spokes or, like, get axles realigned, like, stuff like that. Um, it's probably a little bit weird. I imagine like, I imagine this this cybernetic thing we have. It probably has like an outer shell. Um, so the first thing is I'm I'm probably stripping it of like this casing, almost like uh, going down to like the robotic muscles of it, um, okay. just so that I can find the parts or the places where I can like integrate this and have it like be functional. Sure. Um. So it's rig rule, I presume? Yeah, that sounds like a rig. Um, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I guess I should ask, since normally my mo my special ability applies to um, bike modifications, mm -hmm. should I not apply my special ability that gives me plus one result level? Um, yeah, no, because... <laughs> you, you're familiar with taking apart and putting back together bikes, and this is like corporate technology, which is much yeah. more advanced. So, no, I don't think so. Okay, that's reasonable. Um, so I've got one rig. Uh, Anthony is actually not amazing at this whole thing. It's just that he does bikes so much. Um, so I've got one die. Okay, so uh, that's only one spoke. But... Uh, it's a start. So you've you've cut open an area for you to attach this new head, basically. Sure. But uh, this metal skin is some kind of metal that you're not familiar with and is way stronger than you expected it to be. So you're having difficult going. Yeah. Could you absolutely. have the um, the expert roll next time you do it? I think the expert would be two D, right? That's true. Oh uh, man, you want me to make Martin part of this again? <laughs> You just got rid of him. <laughs> I know. Listen. But it would also, be more dice. Yeah. If um, uh, other people can help for free during downtime as well. So um, you can just have, you can have had Martin help on this if you want for another die. Uh, I think it's totally fine, this first roll at least. Let's say that I tried to do it by myself and I'm going to realize very quickly that I probably need Martin's help uh, and I need to find a new way to contain Martin, I guess. <laughs> Sure. All right. Uh, who wants to go for the second downtime? I guess. Uh, so, two of you have already done two downtimes, though. Yeah, uh, I already did the the two. Yeah, Kiki and Anthony have still have one more each. Oh no, Kiki did two to heal. So oh, Anthony so is it? Okay. Yeah, it's just me yep. doing more okay. robot. So yeah, you you see, uh, it's probably like a day later or something. Like there's probably a long day of. Uh, Anthony trying to like strip this shell off uh, and maybe he only gets it like around the neck area like he doesn't uh, get as much progress done in a day um, and eventually I have to come back to Martin who God knows what he's doing in the diner or like maybe he's out practic practicing riding a bike like trying to ride in circles or something to get used to it and falling over or something like that um and I have to, like, wait for a moment as he picks himself back up. Or maybe I'll go, like, 
uh, offer him a hand, you know what I mean? Uh, pull him up off the ground. Uh, and I'm like, all right, listen, Martin, you're probably not the best at riding bikes. That's <laughs> understandable. Uh, clearly you were not even the driver uh, in the truck you were in. Uh, but I, I have faith that uh, everybody can learn, you know? Uh, and I think I could help you out, okay, Martin? Uh, but I need some things from you. Uh, some very specific things. Uh, and Anthony will kind of like turn, maybe like put his arm around his shoulder and turn Martin with him uh, back towards the diner. And I'll be like, for starters, we need to not have as many shattered windows uh, <laughs> in our hideout, uh, you know? If we go to another bar, if things happen, you know, we can pay for mistakes. Uh, maybe make a different gang pay uh, if it's their fault, right? Uh, but maybe cool it around here a little bit. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to need real bad, uh, and Anthony's like walking him to the garage, is I need your help. Uh, and I'll just like bring him to the, the Cerberus project, which he probably knows about. Uh, mm -hmm. But... I was actively trying to avoid him making a three-headed monster that kills somebody accidentally. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think he's a little let down at first, and then he feels bucked up when he's, you say that you need his help. Yeah, so. <laughs> he's getting upset that I want him to stop smashing windows. Yeah, exactly. Listen, Martin. <laughs> listen, Martin. I'll take uh -huh. you to the gun range. We can constructively uh destroy things you know what i mean like let's apply our energy uh in a good way uh mm -hmm. which means not on our base not in that way um but yeah I'll, I'll take martin and try my best to uh learn from him and not have him uh, get a lion to leap at us with a mane of blades right yeah uh Sounds so he cool. is two dice is that my understanding uh, yes yep uh, two dice Tier plus one because he's an expert. Oh, okay. Ooh. He knows what he's doing. Yeah. Okay. More than me. Two more. Um, and I will I will spend my coin to increase the uh, okay the result, which will be me uh, helping Martin get into the life of a biker, uh, uh -huh. not inside of our our gang our hideout, like teaching right. him how to ride and like taking him to town. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Yeah, so uh, he's actually been planning this this whole time and, like, has documents and stuff for how to, uh, uh, for both things, I guess, how to attach another head and also how to be a biker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's ready, ready to get down to business, if only you had asked sooner. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. On the topic of spending script, I'm also going to yeah. take an extra downtime. Okay. Ooh, uh, everyone's. I'm going to spend a script, uh, and it's just going to be me uh, basically training all the new recruits, because our scale went up when our tier went up, and so I'm okay. training and drilling them, and so that's going to be how I train my resolve <laughs> XP. Alright, sounds good. Uh, I think you've got... Uh, the... We got steel, not resolve. Steel. For... Yeah. Yep. Okay. I just imagine Doc... Uh training new recruits and being like, listen, guys, corporations are not so bad. And like, <laughs> except for Anthony walking. <laughs> I was thinking more of the Mulan segment. Um, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's right. it. <laughs> yeah, except on bikes. Uh, but everything else is exactly the same. Like the exactly the with same. sticks and everything. The, the, the yeah. wooden pole yeah, techniques. Exactly. Oh, yeah. But on bikes. Yep. <laughs> All right. So, uh, you're approached by, uh, no, I'm sorry. Yes, you're approached by Huxley Snyder, your contact, who says he himself was approached by his contacts in the Carrion. Um, the Carrion being another uh, body mod-like focused gang, but from a very different approach. They're much more like, um, they're less like they want to experiment and do flashy things like the Barbaros. They are, uh, you know, gritty, and I'm going to attach this blade to my arm because it will help me kill things, not because it looks cool. That kind of thing. <laughs> I don't understand this at all. <laughs> um, 
Uh, they have also heard about the barbers uh, and the ongoing war, and uh, they also have an interest in taking down the barbers, but um, they are themselves kind of on the back foot because of their ongoing war with the condors. So uh, they are willing to, uh, they would like, if you take out the barbers, to um, uh, offer you payment to do so um, in exchange for them being able to raid the barbershop of whatever like hmm. surgical tools and stuff that they need. Okay. Um, I think we're gonna we're gonna say that 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 sounds like a, an interesting offer. Uh, and after we take out the barbers, uh, we will uh, arrange the exchange. I'm sorry. Um, can you join me over here for a whisper fight? Uh, <laughs> after I'm done dealing with this other gang. After I'm done dealing with this other gang. No, so no, no, after no, no, after they character. leave, if if that's all they wanted to say, then I'll the, come over and talk to Seth, and I'm going to be like, so if we take out the barbers, it's up to us whether we want to follow through on the deal or not. I didn't say we'll do it. I said we'll make the deal after we get the oh, barber okay. shop. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, there is one other thing that Huxley has to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, part of his uh, radio show um, is also uh, he uses it to listen to, to like other radios. Uh, he's got like a big antenna on his like garage or whatever um, that he also uses to listen to radio chatter from further away. And he's picked up that uh, the corporations uh, have mentioned. Uh, the area surrounding Sagi, Sagi Bottom Creek um, recently. And there's been some agitation. Uh, and it is only a matter of time before they come with a full uh, onslaught. That There seems to be something here that they uh, uh, like beyond this deal with the barbers. Uh, there's, there was talk about like um, we can't let the gangs get in the way and that kind of thing that he's picked up on uh, some unprotected corporate chatter. So he wants to give you this warning, and uh, he says, I'll be on the lookout for whatever they're doing, and I'll keep you posted. Uh, but we need to prepare. Okay. So, um, it sounds like we've uh, got a plan coming together. Uh, so I'm going to get the uh, the key players of the uh, the gang all together and say that uh, we're at war with the barbers, as you understand, and we have some really nice opportunities here where the mercy givers are willing to help us in finishing the job, and the carrion are willing to pay us to do it. So I think we're in the uh, a sort of perfect storm here to take this gang out. Um, Considering the time, do we want to take our break and then do the plan when we get back, or should we just go into yeah, it now? Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. So we'll take a five or so minute break now uh, and join us afterwards. Uh, stay tuned, uh, and we'll come up with the plan of what exactly we're going to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> we don't know. What? <laughs> <All right. laughs>